That same day, Jesus went out of the house and sat by the lake. Such large crowds gathered around him that he got into a boat and sat in it, while all the people stood on the shore. You know, when I read this, I read about Jesus, the teacher, sitting and the congregation standing. And some days I wish I could get that. <laughs> then he told them many things in parables, saying, A farmer went out to sow his seed. As he was scattering the seed, some fell along the path, and the birds came and ate it up. Some fell on rocky places, where it did not have much soil. It sprang up quickly because the soil was shallow. But when the sun came up, the plants were scorched, and they withered because they had no root. Other seed fell among thorns, which grew up and choked the plants. Still other seed fell on good soil, where it produced a good crop, a hundred, sixty, or thirty times what was sown. He who has ears to hear, let him hear. And I think there's many of us here who wish that when they sowed a, deer, sowed, uh, a bushel of corn, it would, uh, it, it would produce a hundred times. Wouldn't that be nice? Well, I'm not going to dispense with the joke either. <laughs> Two guys, a disciple and a Baptist, were walking down a dirt road with a dog. <laughs> a bird. They were going bird hunting. And they met another fellow walking up the road. And so they stopped in the middle of the road and commenced to talk about the state of bird hunting in the area there. The third guy looked down at the man's dog there and he said, Is he a good hunter? And the guy, it was the Baptist dog, and he said, Well, he sure is. He can find quail or pheasant just about anywhere. If they're out there, he'll find them. And he has never in his life flushed the cup. The guy says, I'll give you $1,000 right here and now for that dog. And Baptist kind of scratched his head and said, Well, you know, okay, I guess. And the guy went in his pocket and came out with a checkbook. And Baptist says, No, I don't take checks. He said, it's okay, my check is good. I'm a trustee down at the Methodist Church. So the Baptist relented and the exchange was made. He got a check and the other fellow got a dog. As the other guy disappeared around the curve in the road down the way a little bit with the dog, the Baptist looked at the disciple and said, what is a trustee in the Methodist Church? And the disciple said, well, I've been a disciple all my life, but I, and I really don't know. But I think a trustee in the Methodist church is like a deacon in the Baptist church. And the guy goes, oh, shoot, there goes my money and my dog. <laughs> <laughs> well, like I said, I've got a truncated sermon today, and I'm, gonna have to think, I'm just going to have to put this down. Because that's all, it's, that's all that it's useful for today. God has blessed us in a mighty way today, and, and we have celebrated a lot of stuff, and that's great. But today, we, I was going to talk about the sermons about all that seed and sower stuff. How many of you have heard a sermon on that before? How many of you might have heard a dozen sermons on that before? Yeah, me too. How many of you have heard the sermon on the seeds and so the, the seeds and the sower and the ground and all that stuff? How many of you have heard the one where where the preacher? exhort you, I've been exhorted in this way many times myself, exhort you to be a good seed or to be good ground. How many of you have heard a sermon like that? Yeah. Well, we got some farmers in here, don't we? Yeah, we got some. How many of you have red dirt in your, in your tracts of, of, of farmland? Any of you got red dirt out there? Any of you got black dirt out there? Does the dirt have a choice whether it's red or black? What's the dirt going to do? So why does it do me any good to compare Christians to the dirt? When you buy seed, if you bend seed, whichever, some of it's hybrids and I know you've got to buy it. When you buy that stuff, can, you, can that seed, I mean, it's going to germinate or not, right? You can't tell one from the other, right, before you put it in the ground. Some of them come up, some of them don't. The kind I plant never come up. I don't know what the story is on that. I don't think I ever get any good seed. But the seed is what it is, isn't it? Well, what difference is it, you know, and wheat's not going to come up corn, and grass is not going to come up wheat, none of that stuff. Wheat, a seed can't be anything but what it is, right? 
Do I have any business trying to tell you to be a better seed than you already are? A seed is a seed. It's going to do what it's going to do. It doesn't have any choice. So I don't need to tell you to be a better seed. If you're a seed, you can't choose either. Not a good metaphor. There's a third player in this story, isn't there? What player have we got there? Word. The sower. Now, how many of you have heard the sermon where the sower is God? Yeah, well, that doesn't help much either. I can't tell you to be God, can I? That won't work. So instead, let's say the sower is not God, but the sower is you. How many players in this story have a choice? One. That's the sower. What choices does he have? Two. Sow seed or stay home. Right? He knows when he puts that seed out on the ground, some of it's going to land in a... Some of us going to land in the road. I bet some of us around here are old enough to remember before the roads around and before these fine dirt roads through the fields out here had ditches beside them. And you go out and sow seed, and some of them wind up in the road. That seed didn't have a chance. Well, you knew that when you went out. Some of us going to wind up out there. Some of you have got some land that's got rocks down under it, not far, far enough down that the, the plow won't hit it, but all winter long it can't establish enough root that it's going to be able to stand the heat when it comes. So that stuff doesn't have a chance either. But you knew that when you went out and planted, didn't you? you just, that's the way it is. Some of it, I hadn't seen much, now in the wheat fields, I hadn't seen much weeds, but I think y'all get to use herbicide. But why did you use that stuff? Because if you didn't, some of that stuff would get choked out. And you'd still plant even though you knew that was going to happen. You know that not all of it is going to come up. And you paid good money for that. It was precious. You put it out there knowing that some of it wasn't going to come up. Well, I'll tell you what. When we go out as the soul, we got two choices. We can spread the gospel or we can keep our mouth shut. I guarantee you that we got a used car salesman in here. He'll tell you this is the truth. When you got to meet 20 people to sell one car, and they know they want the car when they start talking to you. So how many people do you guess you might have to talk to to get one person? To receive the gospel. Or even to come to church to visit with us the first time. A lot of people. We got to sow a lot of gospel seed. We got to be out. If we're going to be the sower, we have to be two things. We have to be faithful. We can't stay at home and keep our mouths shut. And we got to have hope. I'm mean to tell you. I was in, when I was in Ohio, I was looking at all the weather that I was seeing back here and thinking about all that corn that was planted and was unirrigated. And I knew that those guys put that stuff out with all the faith and hope in their heart that it was going to come up and they were going to make money off of it. And I know some of them are not going to make anything, but some of them are not going to make anything at all because they don't even have insurance on them. And they're going to be wiped out pretty bad. They're going to lose a bunch of their year's money. And I feel deeply sorry for them. But I know what they did. They went out there in faithfulness to their trade, to their calling by God. And they went out there with the hope that, that knowing what the weather in Kansas can do to you, they put that stuff in the ground without an irrigation system anyway. Believing that God was going to bring it up. The, the sowers are the only ones who have a choice. Jesus wasn't telling us to be good seed or to be good dirt. He was telling us to be good sowers, to show up every day, to do what we're supposed to do, to do what we are called to do, even when we know a lot of it is not going to count for a thing. It counts to Him. It counts in faithfulness. We can show up 
with faith and hope every day. We can speak the gospel, but we can even do better than that. We can do the gospel, and it'll grow. If there's one here this morning who is a baptized Christian and not a member of this fellowship, and you hear Jesus Christ calling on you to join together with us in worship and in service, join me here at the front as we sing number 372, Are You Able, said, said the Master. If there's one here this morning who is a member of this fellowship, and you hear Jesus Christ calling on you to rededicate yourself to His service, then you join me here at the front as we stand and sing. And if there's anyone in this meeting today who has not received Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, and you hear Him calling you today to join hands with Him in your walk to life everlasting, then meet me here at the front and make that good confession. Let's stand together and sing number 372.